yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually not too far different from using an actual DualShock controller. Oh, this is amazing! This is changing my life. Fighting games kind of suck on the PS Vita because it only has two shoulder buttons, unlike the PlayStation controller, the DualShock, which has four shoulder buttons. So today we're going to be finding out whether you need this device, which gives your PlayStation Vita as many buttons as this. Now actually, this product comes as a recommendation from a Twitter user, Old Maru, or Old Mario, whichever name you go by. I had written on Twitter, I love that classic Street Fighter games are playable on the PS Vita, but I wish I'd had an R2 button on it. And then I got this reply which says, you can get a grip in Japan for that, I think they're around 4,000 yen. Well, according to Yodobashi, you can even get them for 3,000 yen, so a little bit cheaper than we were expecting, which is good. But the question is, what, what exactly does this do? On the front of the box, you can see it says, remote play assist attachment. I guess that means that the whole point of this device is to make it easier to play games which are remote play, because when you play remote play on your PS Vita, you'll notice that you have <laughs> significantly fewer buttons than you have on your, on your actual PlayStation 4. And if you look here at the bottom of the box, you can see that the device will have two extra buttons here on the right side and two extra buttons here on the left side for L2, R2, L3, and R3. So I'm a little skeptical because in order to make this work, essentially what this device has to do is touch the touch screen on the back of the PS Vita because actually it's, it's it's programmed so that touching these four zones here will activate L2, R2, L3 and R3. However, <laughs> I'm not sure how responsive they're going to be. Let's read the instruction manual. Not. This is really weird packaging. It's in, like, it's in plastic but it's also wrapped in like sticky tape. Uh, that's kind of weird. It has this little clip here on the top, which I believe is designed so that you can put the PS Vita in without damaging the, the PS Vita. You don't have to like bend any plastic to get it in, which is a nice touch. This is the device, let me just show it to you. Hopefully you can see clearly, it's got these four pads here. They're kind of soft to the touch and they're going to touch the touch screen when I press these buttons here. So if you look carefully, you can see that it actually flicks out the plastic pads when I touch these buttons here on the back. This is what the buttons look like on the back. They're, they're fairly loud if you, if, you, if you hit them loud. You can press them quietly as well. But yes, literally that's all it does. By the way, this is for the PS Vita 2000. I don't think it works with the Crystal 1000 series unit. Fortunately, I've got a 2000 series unit here. Fits in very nice and snugly, perfectly fits. Then you just click this in and it closes in and it's snug, absolutely not moving anywhere. So I've actually got Street Fighter Alpha 3 running on the PlayStation 1 emulator here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the camera angle so that you can see what I'm pressing down here. Oh, oh, it looks like it might, it might work. So let's change the camera angle so you can actually see. All right, before we begin, what I really want to show you is how it feels to play without this device. Essentially, without this actual housing plugged in. I don't actually use these bottom, these, these touch pads because they're a little bit too inaccurate. Instead what I do is I have mapped the buttons like so. Light punch, medium punch, strong punch, and then light kick, medium kick, strong kick. And essentially it's really annoying because I have to go one, two, three, one, two, three, which is not as natural as just going one, two, three, one, two, three, and having all my commands on the right hand and all my directions on the left hand. Because essentially with this, this layout, I always end up just not using the medium punch because it's actually a really useful button, but it's just pressing, doing this with my hand is, is really, really difficult. As, as everyone will remember from the Super, Super Nintendo days, let's see how it feels to put this little pad on. So I'm just gonna stick the pad back in like so, lock it into place, and now we need to change the button assignments. It's light punch, medium punch, strong punch, low kick, medium kick, high kick. All right, so I've remapped the buttons so that all of my commands are on here. I'm going punch, punch, strong punch, light kick, medium kick, and then my strong kick will actually be on this new button here, this R2 button. So let's see how the R2 button feels. Okay, well it works. It's a, it's squishy. <laughs> it's a squishy button. It actually feels a little bit like playing playing a, pre a PlayStation button. Let me see how it compares to to a PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually not too far different from using an actual DualShock controller. So now let's see how it feels to fight. Ooh, oh, this is amazing. Whoa, this is revolutionary. This is changing my life. Hang on a second. Wait, wait. 
with this one little extra button, with this one extra button here, because I can go one, two, three, one, two, three, it has changed my life entirely. Hang on a second. Can you see, I'm not sure if you, sure if you can see exactly when I'm pressing the button, but let's just hope that you can. Wow. This is brilliant. <laughs> Revolutionary. Now I'm not obviously using the shoulder buttons a lot because I have, I'm not used to using them as my strong buttons. I'm, I'm gonna have to practice using them, but essentially it works every time. It's not like it fails sometimes. It, it, I mean, it feels a little squishy. It's not as clicky as using an arcade stick maybe, <laughs> but it's certainly comparable to using a, a, a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4 even, because even Dual, all Dual, DualShock controllers have this slightly triggery soft soft button. So wow, I am 100% 100% convinced. Let's see if I can do three punches at the same time. Uh, no, I can't do it. Something that's a little bit of a disappointment is that there's this this grey bit of plastic, this black bit of plastic here in the middle, and because it's there, it kind of gets in the way of this button. I would I would I would like to be able to have this whole area here to be for the button, and then this whole area here for another button. But unfortunately, I'm like pressing the black plastic when I'm trying to actually press. I'm actually trying to press press the L button, and instead I'm putting, pressing black plastic. Oh, but I managed it. I got all three. Now let's see if I can do a level three. Where so basically, if you if you're not following the Street Fighter stuff, basically, uh, you have to press one, two, three kicks at the same time in order to do the super, level three super combo. So let's see if I can do it. Nope. Oh, I got it. Sweet. All right. I think I know how I can do this. I'm going to bring up my attack data and my combo data, and then I'm going to do a level one which is 32 damage. Let's see if I do level two, if I can actually manage it. Level two. Okay, that's 46 damage. Now let's see if I can do a level three. Oh, yeah, I managed it, 62. So basically it does work. I think it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's 100% possible to get these three button, you know, level three super combos using this pad and it you know it adds a little bulk to it obviously but obviously if you're you're quite serious about playing fighting games and you want to be able to play these classic games and there's so many classic classic fighters on PS1 it was kind of a shame that basically the only thing stopping it from being its full experience was the lack of buttons on the PS Vita and you always I mean using the touch screen like you can I programmed I programmed the touch screen here to be L Hang on a second, if you just hold down this button here, you can actually program touch zones. Let me just show you in the controller settings. You can actually have L2 and R2. And if you don't need all three buttons at the same time, you can go into a key config and set L2 to be three punches at the same time. And you can have R2 to be three kicks at the same time. That way, if you want to do a level three super combo, all you do is touch in the corner of the screen like this. Uh, not like that. Like that. And that way you can do your level 3s, or you can do your Shinku Hadoukens as well. That, I'm not 100% sure how much damage that did, but essentially, how awesome is this to be able to have all these extra shoulder buttons? And I guess if you have any games that need L3 as well, you can use these buttons as well. Right now I'm playing a PS1 game, so I don't think there's any, well, there might have been an L3 command, but basically this game doesn't have any L3 commands, so I'm not going to be testing that right now, but... How awesome is this, being able to use all six com fight commands on the right hand. I'm really, really happy. This is really revolutionary for me because it's going to breathe new life into my v PS Vita. And another thing is that even though I really enjoy my Switch, there's just hundreds more games to play on the PS Vita. So this is this is really good news for me because I really want to get into some more beat-em-ups and having this large catalogue on the Vita is, is, is really, really nice. Plus I have a great new controller, which feels feels really nice to play with. Other bonuses are the fact that this controller makes the palm rest larger, so you have more space to actually rest your hand, which is a nice little bonus. Check it out! So epic. Anyway, so that's all I really wanted to show you, is this awesome grip by Hori, which also makes a bunch, they make arcade sticks and accessories for Switch and Vita and every console basically. It costs about $30 when you convert the money from Japanese yen. It's called the Remote Play Assist 
attachment. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, if, even if you're not playing remote play, if you're just playing PS1 games like this or any kind of games like from the game archives, this is a really, really great add-on. And thank you very much to the Twitter user that suggested this to me because otherwise I honestly wouldn't have known that it existed. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this random, slightly informative video about this awesome little attachment that you can get for your PS Vita. I do still play my Vita, especially now that I'm discovering a ton of awesome game archives, classic games that you can play, and this attachment is going to breathe a lot of life into them because now you have equally as many buttons as you had on the PlayStation DualShock 3. Are you interested in this attachment? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video and all that great stuff, and I will see you in the next Nihongo Game video.